Hi, I'm Mike Ebert, and we're speaking today with Mike Glycona, who is a New Testament historian with the North American Mission Board. And Mike, we're going to be talking today about the historical evidences for Jesus' resurrection. Why is that such an important topic? Well, the early Christians made it very important in, in our society, our culture, where you know, we're talking about worldviews, truth, uh, what can we know. It becomes relevant for us. Um, the early Christians, in fact, Paul, who is perhaps our earliest Christian writer, says in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, that if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our faith is worthless. And in fact, the, in the original Greek, the word worthless is placed first in the clause to draw attention to it. Paul is adding emphasis here. Completely useless, worthless is your faith if Jesus has not been raised. And even in the Gospels that report Jesus predicting his death and resurrection, uh, many times he does so in the context that after he has made a radical claim about himself or an act such as overturning the tables in the temple, the Jewish authorities said, well, show us a sign that you have the authority to do these things. And Jesus said, well, uh, I'll give you one sign, my resurrection from the dead. And I think there's really good historical evidence that Jesus did predict his death and resurrection. So if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then that makes him a false prophet whom no rational person should follow. So the importance of the resurrection is that it confirms the Christian worldview. And if he didn't rise from the dead, it falsifies the Christian worldview. So a lot stands, a lot hinges on this topic that we're talking about. Now, as believers, we're obviously placing our faith in Jesus, so there is a faith element to that. Why do Christians also need to know the historical evidences? Oh, good question. Especially uh, students, co college students, because when you go off to, say, a secular university, you're going to get challenged in your faith a lot, and, and rightly so. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you're not going into a Christian environment. In fact, you're going in an environment that is quite hostile toward the Christian view, especially an evangelical view. 2007 report by two Jewish researchers found that whereas only 3% of American faculty were negative toward Jews, 22% were negative toward Muslims, and 53% negative toward evangelical Christians. So there is an overt bias against evangelical Christians in the university today. Um, and in fact, you know, I've heard lots of stories from students saying, first day of class, professor says, how many of you are Christians? A few raise their hands. He says, by the end of the semester, my objective is that you will no longer be a Christian. Hmm. I can't imagine them doing it with anyone else, you know, a, a Muslim student or a Hindu student, a Jewish student. We want to deconvert you from your religion, but they're doing it with Christians all the time. So the Christian student is getting his or her faith assaulted constantly within the university. Uh, setting. And so what discussing this does is it shows uh, that Christianity presents a very rational uh, view of reality. Uh, it, it confirms the Christian view as the accurate view of reality. So there's really good reason for Christians to be studying this. Now you've really made this the center of your studies and most of your work. You, your doctor, doctoral work was um, centered on this. How did you get so interested in this topic of uh, historical evidences of Jesus' resurrection? My own personal doubts got me involved. I was questioning whether Christianity was true. I ended up talking to Gary Habermas. I'd never had him for a class, uh, but he had a good reputation amongst the students that you could go to him, and, and so I did. And so um, you know, we were talking about all kinds of evidence for God's existence and Christianity. I was initially attracted more to the scientific evidence, uh, say the arguments for intelligent design uh, that are given today. But as Gary talked more, it's like, okay, well, the resurrection of Jesus, wow. Uh, if the arguments for design are true, then that shows that an intelligent designer created the universe, which is consistent with the biblical view, but it doesn't necessarily confirm the Christian faith. But if Jesus rose from the dead, then you've got God and Christianity. And I thought, well, that, that's pretty cool. And there weren't as many people studying it at the time, so as, say, with the creation evolution debate. So I became really interested in this, but primarily because of its overall value in um, answering the question of whether Christianity was true. Now, there are probably thousands of scholars that study this topic and, and have an expertise on it. Where would you place the current um, thinking within biblical and New Testament scholarship when it comes to this issue of did Jesus rise from the dead? 
I can't answer in terms of what percentage of biblical scholars would accept it. Um, I would say, in my opinion, most biblical scholars are not Christians. And you say, wow, well, that's kind of interesting. How can that be? Well, that's a different issue. But um, I mean, I'm a member of the Society of Biblical Literature, which has uh, probably five, six, seven thousand members. And, and a lot of them, more than half of them show up, uh, far more than half of them show up uh, once a year at the annual meeting of the Society of Biblical Literature here in the United States. Um, and you have atheists in that group. You have people like Bart Ehrman, who's an, a, uh, an agnostic. You've got Geza Vermesh, a Jewish scholar. Uh, you've got Elaine Pagels, uh, John Dominic Crossan, Marvin Meyer, uh, all these, these folks, like uh, several of those I just mentioned of the Jesus Seminar that are on uh, a, the a real fringe of the theological left. Well, they'll, some of them will say they're Christians, but they will deny that God exists. So I, I don't know how you consider yourself a Christian in that sense, but they'll deny the resurrection of Jesus. So I, I would guess if you took a bean count of all the New Testament scholars, probably most would say Jesus didn't rise from the dead in any real sense. But then again, if they haven't specialized in the subject, they're, who cares what they think? When you look at what those who have really studied this, uh, and written on the subject, I'd say a majority of them do believe that Jesus rose from the dead, but I don't have the figures to back that up. I would say that um, we can talk more intelligently along the lines of what scholars who have studied the subject grant in terms of the facts upon which we might build a case for the resurrection, things such as Jesus' death by crucifixion, that subsequent to Jesus' death, there were a number of people who had, who had experiences in individual and in group settings in which thoroughly convinced them that Jesus had been raised from the dead and had appeared to them uh, in individual and in group settings. Um, another one would be the conversion of the church persecutor Paul based upon an experience that he perceived was of the risen Jesus who had appeared to him. All right, now are those some of those things you mentioned, uh, are those what you would consider the historical bedrock, some of those elements, or, or what is that phrase, historical bedrock, what does that refer to? I would refer to that as the historical bedrock. Historical bedrock is basically facts that are pretty much beyond doubt. Mm -hmm. um, facts that are so strongly evidenced that the majority of biblical scholars have granted them, including skeptics, atheists, agnostics, Jewish scholars, liberal Christians, everybody uh, would grant them. Uh, historical Jesus scholars talk about building a portrait or painting a portrait of Jesus. In order to do that, what you do is you consider those facts that have great, um, a great deal of evidence that everybody grants. That's considered the historical bedrock, and upon that you build your historical Jesus with less evidence, well-evidenced facts. What are some of those facts that um, you're talking about there? The, the second tier, the less evidenced mm -hmm. ones, uh, but still very strongly evidenced. Um, things such as the, the proclamation that Jesus was raised bodily, uh, the empty tomb, that Jesus predicted his violent, imminent death and subsequent resurrection by God, uh, and the appearance and conversion of Jesus' skeptical half-brother, James. So those are not quite what, what you'd call bedrock, but you still have a lot of scholars that probably do agree on those things. That's correct. What, uh, why do you think this topic continues to be so popular, Mike? I mean, we see probably about a dozen books each year written about it. We see, and some of them are pretty good sellers. Uh, there are seminars, there are debates on college campuses. You participate in some of those. We're still pretty um, enamored, society is, with this topic. Why do you think that's the case? Oh, it's hard to say. I, I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's because, um, again, Christianity stands or falls on whether Jesus rose from the dead. I think most scholars recognize this. That's why um, Dale Allison, uh, who regards himself as an agnostic, refers to this as the, the, the topic we're discussing now is the prize puzzle of New Testament research. And uh, Gary Habermas has completed a, a bibliography of more than 3,400 academic books and journal articles written on it since 1975. Hmm. So yeah, it's very popular and it's probably because of the importance of it in knowing whether Christianity is true. Now, what um, there are obviously some other theories um, out there that explain the resurrection. What are some of those things, if a scholar was to say they have doubts or they're skeptical, what are some of the alternatives that they put forth? 
Well, there's a number of them. The, probably the most popular one today is hallucinations, that they all experienced hallucinations, the disciples, that is. So they weren't necessarily lying. They just thought they saw something that right. really didn't happen. The fraud theory that they were lying is something that was accepted probably 100 years ago by some, but n nobody I know of really accepts it today. Uh, so, yeah, they, they would discount fraud, but they'd say they had a hallucination. They were grief-stricken, and so they experienced a hallucination of Jesus. So that would probably be the most popular. Metaphor is another popular one that... Uh, they sincerely believed that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Um, uh, in term, they didn't have appearances, though. Uh, what they do is they use the resurrection as a metaphor to say that Jesus, uh, to represent Jesus' continuing power and presence among the church today. Those would probably be the two major ones.